Welcome to International Securities Exchange's podcast series. Facilitated by renowned educators, ISC podcasts are intended to teach beginning as well as seasoned investors the ins and outs of trading. To find an updated list of podcasts, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts. Please be sure to listen to our important message following this episode regarding the risks of investing in exchange-traded options. Welcome, everyone. This is Steve Meisinger, your host for today's ISC webinar. Each and every Tuesday, we bring in special guests, whether they are options experts, uh, fundamental experts in the currency markets, uh, technical experts where they watch uh, supply and demand, uh, or a combination of all three. Today we have Stanley Dash. I mean, he's a broker, so Stan knows the markets. Uh, he's been with TradeStation for a number of years. And many of you have been asking about uh, how you can trade ISDFX options. Uh, well, you need to have an equity options account. So TradeStation is one of uh, many choices, of course. But Stan, uh, Stan's firm offers not only options trading, but they have futures trading, and they have spot trading, and of course, an equity trading. So uh, Stan is uh, a great resource. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce Stanley Dash. He's the Vice President of Applied Technical Analysis for TradeStation Securities. Thanks for joining us, Stan. Really appreciate it. Thank you very much, Steve. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Excellent. Don't I, uh, oops, I just need to uh, run a couple of these slides. Yeah, by all means, go right ahead. And then uh, we'll uh, go forward. So uh, you, everyone sees Stan's email, s at tradestation.com, and we'll get more into that in a second. Obviously, today um, we are not making any recommendations. So you, um, the, this presentation is uh, educational only. Uh, if you'd like a copy of the characteristics and risks of standardized options, you can go to 1888options or optionseducation.org. Taxes, margin, and commission, of course, are not included in any kind of uh, discussion that we talk about today. Those are important uh, topics. But again, you uh, need to consider that prior to entering into any options transaction. Uh, if you want to trade ICFX options, um, you're going to need a broker like TradeStation. They are exchange-listed securities. They're cash settled in U.S. dollars. They're European style. They can be traded as spreads. But so, but those of you that are vertical spreaders or your credit spreaders, debit spreaders, what have you, if you like iron condors, you like butterflies, you could do all that. So that's pretty neat. Uh, we have nine pairs. We have three that are brand new. Uh, There's no open interest right now, and uh, three of the, the new ones. But uh, the, tr the ones that we just we've been trading for many, many months, many months now are Australian dollar, British pound, Canadian dollar, euro, yen, Swiss franc, and we just added the Mexican peso, Swedish uh, krona, and a New Zealand dollar. So we have nine, and you'll see the symbols there, and they are dollar rel relative, which means that if you're bullish on the dollar, you'd be buying a call. If you're bearish, you'd be buying a put, and you'd be typing in. And Stan's going to show you the, how to actually access that at uh, TradeStation. So at this point, I want to turn it back to Stan, and he's going to show you some neat stuff about uh, TradeStation. So take it away, Stan. Thanks, Steve. I appreciate that. Um, let me reiterate uh, the legalities, which is uh, concerning nothing to be taken as a recommendation. Um, in fact, TradeStation, uh, TradeStation Securities is a non-recommending firm. We're uh, strictly uh, uh, self-directed. We'll obviously help you with uh, the tools that we provide and with your uh, account opening procedures and account management, but uh, we are a non-recommending firm uh, up and down the line. Um, if you are not familiar with TradeStation, let me mention a couple of things about it. In fact, as I do that, I'm going to... Um, uh, move over to uh, the TradeStation platform so that you can see it. And uh, let me see if I, how adept I can possibly be at, at doing this efficiently. And I think that should be okay. Um, the uh, TradeStation's history, we're a 25-year-old company, and of course we for many years were known as a software firm providing software for market analysis, for technical analysis, options analysis, 
uh, about uh, what's close to 10 years now, I guess about eight or nine years we, ago, we became a brokerage. And uh, in, in, instead of selling our software, the business model changed such that we provide our, our analysis and trading platform to our brokerage customers. I'll keep the commercial short, but I do want to put it in perspective for the ISE's market, to the ISE products, and, and of course, where TradeStation fits into that. Um, when we uh, made that conversion, we really built the TradeStation platform on what I like to describe as three uh, concepts. One is the delivery of data. Uh, the next is the ability to analyze that data, including doing custom analysis of that data. Steve alluded to that. And then the third is be able to act on that analysis. So uh, we need data. We need to do uh, the kind of analysis that each of us wants to do. Sometimes it's mainstream, sometimes it's customized. And then we need to act on that analysis. So we've, we've really built the platform and, and the company's services to, to give you all three of those so you're not in a position where you have to have uh, one software package for market analysis and a different broker for trading and a, a different uh, market for for a different uh, provider for forex than you have for stocks or or options. Uh, we do provide services in in U.S. stocks, in stock and index options, including of course the ISE uh, forex options, as well as in cash forex and in futures. Now I want to go through a couple of things that are a little bit of a recap of what I talked about the last time I was on a few months ago. I won't re-present that entire topic, but I want to go through a couple of things in there. And, and I was uh, 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 furiously chatting with Steve that I had a little bit of a network outage here. I'm in my uh, office in, in New York, actually, and, and I hope that I have enough data to make my presentation. But I did have a, a network hiccup here. Uh, maybe some storms are coming up. I'm not sure, but we'll see how far we can get. At any rate, I do want to recap some things that we talked about last time and, then, and in fact, embellish on those, and then a few things we didn't look at last time I was on. I think it was back in May. Um, you'll see in front of you the, the uh, ISE indexes, and, and Steve mentioned those already. Uh, I sort of separated the top six, which have been in existence for a while. Uh, the ISE has done a great job of putting those together and, pro and, the, together and promoting them. And then those three new ones – that Steve just mentioned. In fact, they're so new. I think they really just kicked them off last week. Uh, they're so new that well, although they're in our feed, we did not, I admit, get the New Zealand dollar description in there. So it's just coming up with the uh, with the symbol repeated in the description column. But certainly, the the other six have been uh, in existence for a while and have been uh, uh, progressing quite nicely. Um, when you look at the ISE options, a couple of things to keep in mind. Steve alluded to this, but I want you to get the idea in in our platform from a practical point of view. You may be interested in a number of these different currencies, maybe just one or two to complement what you do now or to extend what you do now. The important things to remember that as far as the options are concerned, the ISC has created these indexes. Steve can probably answer questions on those if you have them later. But has created these indexes to act as the underlying, as the benchmark, as the underlying asset for the options. Now, of course, these underlyings are um, these indexes are uh, based on cash prices, so they do relate to the market. They're certainly not out of thin air. But keep in mind that, that these indexes, and this is the symbology set we use in, in TradeStation. We prefix with a dollar sign and then have a .x extension. Uh, they may not be exactly the same as the ones ISE uses. Um, but keep in mind that these are... Um, I guess in the securities world, they're considered uh, index options, but the index really is based on the value of the underlying currency. In that sense, also keep in mind that these may not always match up with what you're used to seeing in the interbank market, and that's because it's all uh, based on the dollar. And we're used to seeing pairs in different combinations. And I, I emphasized this last time, and if, you, if you're new to this, it can be a little bit confusing when you start off. Thank you for listening to our podcast. To find more podcasts on options, stocks, alternative markets, and market data, please visit www.ise.com slash podcasts.